welcome back. This is your man, Warrior. And yeah, yes, last week I took a break for the EA exclusive content. I am back to my regular roles of doing a bunch of roster reviews. Of course, I'm still going to do regular videos on other things, but I am going to be doing roster reviews starting up again this week. So Roku is first. He's with Babinski. What's happening? Babinski, they're a great guild. I just wanted to shout them out. His focus for this video is pretty simple. It's heroic AAT raids and kind of where to go with his farm and what characters to farm. Now, Roku is a free-to-play individual, so he's not spending money in the game, so he is going to not have as many freedoms and leisures as some people do. His arena squad looks really great for free-to-play. He's 257th, uh, you know, almost top 200. I think we can get him into the top 200 pretty good. Uh, so this looks great. As far as ships go, you know, he's got a decent fleet. Um, he just started ships not too long ago. He's a, he's a level 77. And his fleet rank is 171. Again, not bad at all for free to play. Now we are going to go into um, his heroic AAT uh, teams that I suggest. And I'm going to be doing what's called economy of motion, which is the fewest number of characters farmed for the most benefit. And so we're going to get right into it. First, your arena squad looks great. Um, because you don't have good mods right now, your Stormtrooper Han is not very fast. The whole point of him is to uh, is to go quickly to taunt and then to provide additional turn meter to the team. So because he's slower, I would be moving Wedge out of the leadership role and I would be putting Lando in there. You'll get additional critical damage and you'll get additional speed uh, for the entire team that's uh, Rebels. So I would definitely do that. Um, you definitely want... Your team definitely looks phenomenal. I don't think that there'd be a whole lot that I would change for now other than flipping Lando into the lead, but eventually it would be nice to see Shore Trooper as an auto taunt on this team, and that way you might be able to have a Boba Fett on this team to set some really cool combinations up. You could eventually replace Lando with Boba Fett, but you have Boba Fett and you have Shore Trooper. Those are a couple of characters you're going to have to work on. Shore Trooper for sure is kind of near the bottom of the barrel. So we're going to get right through it. You also wanted to know about your first Zeta, and as far as your first Zeta goes, my first three thoughts are Qui-Gon Jinn, Darth Vader, or Kylo Ren uh, because you have all three of them and they are the best three Zetas that you have available to you. Now I'm going to be leaning towards a Darth Vader suggestion and I'll tell you why as we go through this. Let's get right into it and go into phase one of the heroic AAT tank raid. For phase one of the heroic AAT tank raid, I still and most people still do suggest for phase one Jedi. You've got to get Jedi anyway so you can get Yoda. And if you're going to farm five characters up to seven stars to get Yoda, you might as well use them in the raids, right? So they're one of the pillars of the game to unlock Yoda. You might as well use them for phase one. They do a great amount of damage. Now, if you're not super, uh, super fan of Jedi, you can just use the top five that you have. A Qui-Gon Jinn lead for extra speed. Jedi Knight Anakin, Ahsoka Tano, they work great together for high damage. And then Luminara and Jedi Consular both can keep the team alive long enough that you can do the damage you need to do to make it through. Uh, those top five, two of them have ships currently. Ahsoka has a ship, uh, which is a dispelling ship. It's great. And Jedi Consular has a ship. Both of their ships are easily farmable, and they're both relatively easy to farm as well um, in multiple locations, especially Jedi Consular. So you can get these guys up. You're not currently ready for phase one of a heroic raid because you gotta have five seven star characters to do this so if you were going to run these in phase one you would not be able to because you're not high enough on the star rate so for the rarity get those stars up to seven stars use those top five you already have them you already got them halfway geared up just finish the job on those top five and that'll also give you two excellent pilots for ships let's go to phase two for phase two, you already have three of the droids that I would suggest in phase two, uh, leveled up, geared up. So you're going to want to continue the star level and the gear on these three individuals to make sure that you can use them. Uh, droids are relatively naturally fast, but you do want to pair them with a couple of Jawa. And the two Jawa that I recommend is Jawa Engineer and Chief Nebit. Uh, Jawa Engineer is difficult to farm. I would actually put your farming of Ray on hold and finish Jawa Engineer because you said Hat, the heroic AAT is more important to you. And so because of that, pause Ray. Even though she's a damage dealer, uh, Jawa Engineer will be more important for this purpose, he will be able to bring your droids back. And early on in the raids, you will be losing your droids. Um, and so any extra life you can get back and, and uh, extra attacks you can 
get will be well worth it. Um, speed is always going to be an issue for you. So you could potentially put an auto taunt on this particular team. You have one in Shore Trooper. I think you have Shore Trooper at three stars. So um, we'll talk more about Shore in a minute. For phase three of the heroic AAT, of course, these guys are going to all have to be seven star, but Emperor Palpatine, you should be able to get him seven stars the next time he comes around. You have your best setup is rebels, and so your rebels will probably be ready, if not already ready, to unlock Emperor Palpatine. That'll be great. Continue to farm Royal Guard and Darth Vader and TIE Fighter Pilot. TIE Fighter Pilot is a fast farm, relatively speaking. You should be able to get him up pretty quick, so I would do that. Also, in this mix just a side project shore trooper not everybody has an unlocked three star shore trooper i know you've been using all your free crystals to get them and you've got them now and so use him you don't have bays or churn or any of those so definitely go and start to gear up shore trooper he's a tank He's an auto taunt. He can heal the whole team. He's going to be absolutely critical. And in phase three, you will be able to use him with the TIE Fighter Pilot, Emperor Palpatine, Royal Guard, and you would probably put Stormtrooper Han in this team. Now, the way this would work is Emperor Palpatine will run lead. You'll have TIE Fighter Pilot right behind him with Royal Guard as one tank. You could have Shore Trooper or you could have... Uh, Sunfac, which you have, you have a Sunfac, you could put him in there, and or you could have uh, Stormtrooper Han. My suggestion, Royal Guard, Stormtrooper Han, Han and Sunfac for now, and then move Sunfac out eventually for Shore Trooper, since he has the heal and critical hit immunity. But all these characters I'm talking about, again, you are going to have to get to seven stars, so Shore Trooper is farther off than all the others, because it's the only one that you have that is really untouchable as far as farming goes for you, since you cannot do that highest, uh, since you cannot unlock him on his tier. So we're going to go ahead and move into phase four. So phase four, you could also use these guys for phase two or even phase one if you're just trying to participate in the heroic AAT early on when you only have a couple of seven star characters. It's kind of what you do. You go in, you give what you can to the team and you get out and you get your small rewards, but it's better rewards than any other of the raids. So as you're in preparation, you do have five. I would continue to get Admiral Akbar up to seven. Those top six are gonna be the best bets that you have unlocked as far as farmable and all of that. So continue to gear and farm all these guys, um, especially Admiral Akbar. get them to seven stars. I would recommend Admiral Akbar in ships, although I know that you're struggling to get him to three stars and you got to get him to three stars to unlock that extra backup in your ships. But keep going with Admiral Akbar, and hopefully soon you'll be using him in ships as your lead. Uh, he is much, geared up much higher than your other uh, capital commander, so that would be good. Um, in phase five, you would basically want to use, because you're using hopefully Stormtrooper Han in phase three, until you have that team built, you could use him in the Rebels, but once you have that Empire team for phase three built, you're going to move him over to the Empire team, and then you're going to use the Rebels, the last six I just told you about, Lando, Biggs, Wedge, Leia, and Akbar. You're actually not going to run Admiral Akbar as lead, you'll run Wedge, and the reason for that is the turn meter and heal. In a raid, the heal will become even more important for durability and for longevity to get through as much as you can. Uh, Princess Leia can can stealth herself and kind of keep herself alive. And Admiral Akbar will take the debuffs and also heal with that. So you'll want to time his heal right. Make sure that they're pretty hurt and have some pretty good debuffs before you use his cleanse. Once you use his cleanse, it will heal everybody up and take all those debuffs off. So Lando's there for the AoE, Wedge is there for the AoE, and Biggs for the triple shot. It should be a relatively good team, but again, you can use it in phase four, or if this is the only team, which I believe it is the only team you have that's seven star and complete, you for now could use it in phase one just to contribute into the heroic raid. Now you didn't mention uh, Rancor, um, but I am going to say you could use your Rebels in Rancor, obviously. So if you're doing Heroic Rancor, this would be the team you're going to take in and do probably nearly a million damage. So that would be really great. A team you could work towards in the Rancor that would be fun is if 
you decide to use your first Zeta on Darth Vader, whom I suggest, you will be able to get him hopefully pretty soon to seven star, throw some good mods on him, get his attacks and abilities up. And I know everyone's saying that he has just been recently nerfed. That is inaccurate. They made him work the way he was intended to work. He wasn't. It was that he was giving additional turn meter reduction in phase two and even more in phase three and even more in phase four. By phase four, they were taking with one hit like almost 100% turn meter with one shot. That is not the way it was intended. It's written as 20%. So that is why they had to fix it. But it does still in fact work. I know many people, including myself, I tested it after the quote unquote nerf and I was still able to go through and solo it. Now I'm not saying with your Darth Vader and your team as a free to play that you'll be able to get a full solo on heroic with everyone you have right away. Probably won't happen, but it will get you significantly farther than other teams with that being you want to place as high as possible for the best rewards. Darth Vader is probably the best lead. And if you were going to go Darth Vader, it then makes sense to obviously have Royal Guard, which I'm recommending for the other raids. So you're going to want to continue to gear and farm him. And you'll want Emperor Palpatine on this team in the Rancor. They did fix it. Now all of his uh, specials and all of his attacks do, in fact, reduce turn meter properly. It wasn't for Emperor Palpatine, but it will. And then you've also got the TIE Fighter Pilot you could bring in. you got to get his star rate up, but he would be excellent underneath Darth Vader for this. And then, of course, you could add Tebow. You've been farming up Tebow. He would be a great turn meter reducer for this team. So you would have Darth Vader for the dots and the turn meter reduction, Royal Guard to slow down, to put speed down, and um, to take turn meter away, Emperor Palpatine for turn meter, the TIE Fighter Pilot to put tenacity down, which you'll desperately need, and to do a lot of damage and then Tebow for turn meter reduction. And then um, as far as on the side, Shore Trooper for me would be one of your side projects. You've got him three stars. He's not someone that everybody has. He is an excellent taunt, highly viable at three stars. So get him up and use him. I have only three other characters that are gonna be like side projects because I know you've got your Jedi's you're working on. You've got your droids you're working on. You got your Empire and your Rebels you're working on. So you're working on your four pillars of the game, but I would recommend recommend Rex, who is not in here. He is farmable. He, him and his ship, although I would say do not worry about his ship, worry only about him. And also Darth Maul has a ship. And I would say Darth Maul's ship, since you have Darth Maul unlocked, is most important. And then Rex, not his ship, but Rex would be most important. So I would take your currency from ships and I would split it up 50-50 and half would go to unlocking Rex and the other half would go to unlocking Darth Maul, his ship specifically, because you have Darth Maul unlocked. And so I would work specifically on Darth Maul's ship and Rex in the ship shipments. But Darth Maul, you could continue to develop. He will help you in ships and he's just a fun character. There will be times that you're running light side or dark side battles where you run into a Jedi composition. You could bring him in and he's gonna help you get through it. So continue to develop Darth Maul. And then of course, Rex, since you don't have him. The last I'm gonna give you aside from Shore Trooper Rex and Darth Maul is Darth Nihilus. He's the most viable character at three stars and he's the most overpowered character at three stars. He fits into any team composition, can be used in any of the raids. Now early on, since he's difficult to farm for, you will not be able to get him past three stars and not use him in heroic raids. But he will help you in the Galactic War time and time again. He will also help you in Arena. You have no idea. You'd probably be in the top 100 if you had a Darth Nihilus that was uh, leveled up. So that is what I'm going to give you on the side. Your ships really quick look great. Like I said earlier, you're at 171. You're using Mace, and the reason for that is you got him at four star instead of three star, so you get the extra backup ship. You're using a bunch of your two Endurance that you, uh, two Galactic Republic ships that you have. Um, you are using a couple of Geonosians, and they're slow, and the Republic are kind of medium, and then you're using Bigs. My suggestion is eventually, because you're kind of using what you have, eventually would be to get home one in your main lineup when you can get it to four stars because you have him higher gear it's just a faster ship and better balanced ship it's not all about defense and when you're 
playing in your this low star level defense is really not a play that's worth playing i would worry more about offense also i'd get that imperial tie fighter into your primary lineup so that way it feeds turn meter to your team so you can go faster especially since you're using sunfax gian ocean ship um, jedi consular though is great clone sergeant will be great wedge and bigs are great so Roku, you're doing awesome. Focus on those teams. I know you're not quite ready for the heroic AAT yet, but you can be relatively soon. Be uber focused on those four pillars, the Jedi's, Droids, Emperor uh, team, and the Rebels team, and you shall be great. As far as your first uh, on your Zeta, either do Darth Vader so you have better luck in the Rancor raid or do Kylo Ren for the arena for more damage. As always, make sure you keep your gaming on. Warrior, out.